Hey, boys and girls, this is Mr. Bell. I uh, wanted to go over the vocabulary for this next unit because it's, it's rather extensive and you need to be familiar with all these terms. So what I'm going to have you do is rewrite these terms uh, in a Google Doc. So let's get started. Um, first thing, well, we're talking now about statistics. All right, so this is the last sixth grade section we're going to have for the year. So the first thing is a statistical question, and that's kind of the basis of what we're going to talk about. So a statistical question is a question that can be answered by collecting data and where there will be variability in that data. All right, and what that really means is that if you ask a question to your classmate, you say, how old are you? And that student gives you one answer back. There's no variability there. You just have the one answer. But if you ask everybody in the classroom how old they are, well, you're going to get different answers because not everybody's the same age. So that answer is going to have variability. So that's what a statistical question is. It's a, it's a question that you ask and you're going to get a variety of answers. That's all that means. All right. Next thing is a frequency table. In statistics, it's a table that displays the frequency, or how often something happens, of various outcomes in a sample. Okay, so let's go back to that, that age question that we just talked about. And if you ask everybody in the classroom how old they are, and you're going to put those answers in a, in a, in a frequency table. You're going to say, okay, I'm going to have 11 years old, 12 years old, 13 years old, and then I'm going to have five people that said they were 11. I had seven people that said they're 12 and I had three people that said they're 13 whatever it is okay that table shows you how often each one of those answers occurred so that's a frequency table an outlier is a data point that is distinctly separate from the rest of the data okay what if somebody said they were 15 all right it's unlikely but what if somebody said they were 15 well that particular person's an outlier or myself, I'm not 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm much, much older than you guys. So if you included me, I would be a, a, a outlier, okay? Because I'm way different than the rest of the data. All right, the next thing is the mean. Now, you're familiar with mean, even though you may not be familiar with this exact term. But mean is another word for average, okay? To get the average or the mean of something, you sum up the numbers uh, in a data set and then you divide that sum by the number of items in that data set. So let's say you take, you want to find the average ages of everybody in the classroom. You take your, stat, your sample and you have 22 people that answered the question. So you have 22 pieces of data. You add up each one of those pieces of data and then you divide that answer by 22 and that gives you the average age of everyone in the class. The median, on the other hand, is the value of the data set where half the numbers in the data set are larger and the other half are smaller. If there are two middle numbers, and we'll talk more specifically about this as we go, then the median is the mean or the average of those two numbers. Okay, and like I said, we'll go over that. But basically, the median is the number in the middle. Okay, and you have two situations. You can either have one distinct median where the number in the middle is just one value or if you have an even data set you'll have two numbers and you have to find the average of those two numbers we'll talk about that okay mode the number that occurs most often in a data set if you're going uh, back to that that age question and you get um, six people that say I forget the numbers we used earlier but if I get six people that say 11 and I get nine people that say 13 and I get um, or 12 and I get five people that say they're 13. Well, the mode is the number that occurs most often. In this case, the answer for 12 happens more often than the other two. So whatever that answer was, that is the mode. The range will be the difference between the largest and smallest number in a data set. So if you have some people saying they're 11, some people saying they're 13, the range, you just subtract 11 from 13 and you get two. So the range is two, okay? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. All right, next thing, numerical, da numerical data. These are values or observations that can be measured. These values can be placed in ascending or descending order. And what I mean by that is you can put them from least to greatest, or you can put them from greatest to least. All right, they're numbers, and that's what we're working with mostly is numbers. 
spread is the measure of how far the numbers in a data set are away from the mean or the median. So if, you're, if your average age is 12, then um, the, the spread of the data can be, you know, from the 11 to the 13, and you can say how far away those, those are from that, okay? Variability refers to how spread out a group of data is. A common tool to measure variability is the range. All right, the range is the distance from the greatest number to the smallest number. You subtract those two numbers, and that's the range. A cluster is when you seem when you when data seems to be gathered around one particular value. So let's go back to our age um, example. Uh, most of our ranges are probably going to be grouped around 11 or 12. I think most of y'all are 11 or 12. So you probably won't have too many 13s. You definitely won't have any 14s or 15s. You might, but not many. So it's all that data is going to be clustered around 11 and 12. Symmetry is when, if, when you graph your data, the vertical line that's drawn at the center will form a mirror image with the left half of the mirror image and the right half. Uh, uh, let me say it again. With the left half being a mirror image of the right half. Okay, So it's just a line that's drawn right in the middle and you have uh, the same amount on both sides. All right, a measure of center is a value that attempts to describe a data set by identifying the middle of the data set. So measures of center that we're going to be using, uh, I'm gonna, I, did I already talk about them? I think I did. Yeah, mean, median, mode, all these are measures of center. All right, now we're going to start talking about the different types of displays. A dot plot or a dot chart is a statistical chart consisting of data points plotted on a fairly simple scale, typically using filled circles. You may already be familiar with these. You may have used these before. All right, but we will definitely make some of these. The next one is a box plot. It's also called a box and whisker plot, and it displays what we call the five number summary of the data set. And the five number summary is the minimum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and the maximum. And we draw a box around the first quartile to the third quartile, and then the whiskers go out to the uh, minimum and the maximum. Then we have a histogram, and that's a graphical display of data using bars of different heights. And the difference between a histogram and just a typical bar graph is that the histogram bars actually touch each other because the bars represent a range of numbers. And we'll talk more about that as we get into it. The minimum is the smallest observation of a data set. The maximum is the largest observation of a data set. So basically the minimum and the maximum. The minimum is the smallest number. The maximum is the biggest number. Your quartiles are the values that divide a list of numbers into quarters. Put the list of numbers in order. Then you cut the list into four equal parts. The cuts are called the quartiles. The lower value is the lower quartile. The middle value is the median. And the upper value is called the upper quartile. And we will get more into this. If you don't understand this right now, that's completely understandable. But we will, we will go over this extensively. The inner quartile range is similar to the range of the entire data set. But the inner quartile range is basically the spread of the middle 50%. All right? It is the difference between the upper and lower quartiles. And then finally, we have skewed data. Skewed data is when data isn't symmetrical, like when we had uh, symmetry. And you're either going to have it skewed to the left or skewed to the right. If it's skewed to the left, that means you kind of have a long tail kind of floating out to the left. If it's skewed to the right, you have a long tail uh, going out to the right. So those are all the terms that you need to be familiar with to be successful in this particular, um, this particular section. So please make sure you copy all these definitions down onto your um, Google Doc. And that way you will be ready for the test when we come up with it.